So guys, I'm here today. You tracked me down to the Electrical Academy where I did my 18th edition oh. under your tutelage. So don't act surprised. <laughs> and, you've, and you passed. I did have a good time. <laughs> you know what? I've told the story before. I'm going to tell it again. So I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Right? 18th edition would be no problem. I've been a spark for 20 years. No problem. Come down and, and I got overwhelmed. I got overwhelmed mm -hmm. and I got a bit, I don't know, I think I got a bit swallowed up by it because I haven't done an electrical qualification for so long. And obviously, in your class and that, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this book. So I went home and I marked up all the book. And then when we'd done a mock, all of my markings didn't make no sense. They didn't really help. So I ripped them all out and I thought, I'm just going to freestyle it. Anyway, come to the actual exam day and I was like, bum, 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 bum. I've got... I'm, I'm panicking, properly panicking. Anyway, I go for, I'm, I'm doing it, I'll go for the book. Get about 20 minutes left. <clears throat> I think I'd answered 20 questions. Wow. Because like, oh, oh. my head had completely gone. And, I, and at the end, I had to sort of just roll the dice and I just went through and I answered the questions based on what I could remember from Kev teaching me. Yeah. And, I, and do you know what? I still passed. <laughs> no, I just, I, I was like, I can't remember he said that, right, go with that. Because sometimes you can overthink it. And if you just go with what comes in your head first, nine times out of ten, if you've been paying attention, it's all right. Yeah. Don't take that. I think, the, I think the problem with the 18th edition book is that not a lot of people are familiar with all of it. Um, you know, they dip in and out when they need it, acts as a doorstop or whatever they're doing with it. <laughs> I'll never touch it again. <coughs> no. That's, that's a, yeah. Which is a bit of a shame, really, because there's so much sort of that you can get out of it. It's written, it's our standard, so it's there for a, for a reason. All of your cable sizing, all of your disconnection times, your characteristics, your reference methods, it's all in there. And if you want to utilise it, you know, in the correct manner to help you and become a, a sort of better you, it, it's great. The thing is, it depends what kind of work you're doing, because, you know, we've got sparks that are out there and they're just slinging it in day in day out but they're working off of diagrams they're working off of that's me like, why would you look at why would you look yeah. at a regs book Do you, know you don't what, need though? to no, okay, no. i had a bit of a realization whilst doing it i am a dirty subby spark right i work on agencies i work direct i go from job to job i'm the mercenary of of the sparky world and so i work from drawings <clears> and i work at all different levels i might be working at school this week and in the power plant next week so I don't tend to use that book and I haven't done an electrical qualification since I left college, which mm. I barely passed. And um, when I was sitting there and I was doing it, I was like, <coughs> I felt like a better spark for doing the course because you sort of get familiar with the book. You sort of become part of it a little bit more. I know it's a weird thing to say, but now you know the book, rather than just being an electrician who knows that book exists, you're sort of familiar with it. You're mm. sort of getting into the whole vibe of being an electrician and continuing... It goes back to, I think when you do the book, you, you revisit stuff that you did know once, but you've forgotten. And then it yeah, makes yeah. you, and you kind of think, yeah, actually, I remember doing that. I remember, you know, what was it? But it was, for, it was it? nice, refreshing your memory. Mm. And I think, I, I, I think doing something like the 18th edition might be more valuable than just doing it to get the 18th edition, do you know what I mean? I think there's, I think there's yeah, like untold yeah. value to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like you were saying, it's very difficult coming back into that classroom scenario. If, when you've not it? been in there for a long time and um, you know, people phone us up and sort of, I'll just do the exam only. It's like, you want to do the exam only, do the exam only. Good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but then again, if you're using the book day in, day out, why would you want to Specifiers, do a Specifiers, designers course? that are using yeah, it all yeah, the time. Yeah. QSs. Yeah. Yeah, but even even like a, like a lot of house bashing electricians, I mean, being being a gold card spark, we think we're better than house bashers. But when it comes to <laughs> technical <laughs> aspects, we are some of the dumbest electricians on, in, in the game as as a subby um, subby gold cards and stuff. Because off, like you say, we're working from we're working from drawings and from um, charts and stuff like that. We, all the design is done for us. It depends on your role and your responsibility and where you want to go, because if you just want to stay doing exactly what you said, and that's absolutely fine, but, you know, a lot of the time, the reason that the 18th edition and getting your head around the book is such a good thing, because it can launch you to other aspects, so you can look at the 2391, because 
then you need to obviously think about it for that. The 2396 the design, you use a lot of the regulations in that, as well as all the other books, EIWR, et cetera. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's also a confidence thing. Um, there's not, um, you know, not everybody has the same level of competence, or not so much competence, but it's confidence. You and know, academic, and really, yeah, yeah, acuity, yeah. academic acuity, I feel like Acumen. Yeah, Acumen. Right. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm an academic. <laughs> yeah, that, being able to come into the classroom, look at a book and take it in. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting there and I historically was bad at school because I... I always say that um, electricians are the kids who messed about at school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, I get yeah. that. <laughs> Clever enough yeah, to know. do some of the tests that we have to do and, and get our heads around some of the maths, but not clever enough to do a degree because we're messed about at school. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on different sort of people in different circumstances. Yeah. I mean, people coming into the trade now, believe it or not, are from... Um, from the city in London that, that, you know, they've made their money or whatever and they've thought, you know what, I've, I've been at this for 20 or 30 years, I want a completely change of environment and I want to do something like electrical work. So it, it's, it takes all sorts, really. Do you know what's funny about that? Um, I, literally three hours ago, I was having a conversation with a uh, geezer on site. Um, Ex-Army. Yep. Loves to talk. Loves to talk. <laughs> but, but, Squad is for you, isn't it? <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's done... Um, He's done, I don't know, tw- he's done his 20 odd years in the army and that. And cool. he's a pilot. Um, army pilot, the whole lot. Mm. I said, what are you doing here? Mm. And he was like, he had a leadership role in Afghan and all that. He, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. he was quite, quite <laughs> well was, uh, thought of. And I was like, why are you here with us? Like, mm. you can go and get underground a year in a, like, in a corporate environment, doing anything. He goes, mate, I've done all of the stress I've had all of the stress. I want to go to work. I want to pick up my tools. I want to get given a job, and I want to do that and go home. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah, that. Relate to yeah, that. get that. Yeah. So I was like, mate, <laughs> makes sense. It <laughs> does make sense. But what I want to do is actually get a little bit about you two's backgrounds, Kev. Yeah. Start with you. Okay. What is this? What is the Electrical Academy to you, and where do you come from? Um, well, basically, I was. Um, same as most electricians, really. I was an apprentice uh, back in 1979. I did my four-year apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship then. I stayed on an extra year, did the C course. Um, I was given a... C course? C course. That was the... It, <laughs> it was a, a design course that was um, offered as a bolt-on by some companies. Okay. Um, and I decided to stay on to, to do that. It was an extra year. I mean, did I get a back lot in, out of back it? Back in the day, it was electrician, approved electrician, technician, and the C course was technician yeah. but oh. none of the companies would pay you the technician's no, no, rate no, because no, they didn't want no, it no. Yeah. same as they don't pay you no. the approved rate anymore yeah yeah exactly that but I'll um, tell you what, the thing about the approved rate as well yeah which drives me insane is approved used to mean that you had two years out, out of your time yeah that's right else, wasn't it or was it four years out of your time I can't. well no you you did or you got the approved rate when you had the 2391 for a cool down period with your gold card so you had that uh, two years where you got that qualification and then you could claim approved money. So yeah. that was an approved electrician, but you had to have the 2391. See, and now it's just 2391. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, like, yeah, you yeah. can come out straight out of college, have your 2391, boom, done. But get back to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yeah. So I stayed on, did the C course, um, and then uh, basically I was working for a couple of companies. I did a, I was, <laughs> I actually fell on my feet uh, within a very short period of time because of who I grew up with. Uh, there was plumbers, specifiers, builders and all sorts. So we tended to stay in a small group and I um, was able to sort of do my own company. Uh, we did a lot of inspection and testing. Um, most of my life I've spent um, being a contractor. I've been all over the uh, sort of UK. Also worked out in America for a couple of years on their systems. Yeah, that so was really interesting. Get, get onto a bit well, it, was in, it was an interesting opening um, thing for us because um, basically we did it as a part of a world or round the world trip. It was me and the, my mate, the plumber. So he was a plumber, I was a Sparks. I mean, we weren't that experienced because we weren't long out of our apprenticeships. But we went over there and spent 18 months in the end. We only went over for a wow. sort of two week trip, ended up spending 18 months. But uh, we were working in San Diego, believe it or not, along the beachfront there on their new apartments that were going up. Um, one of the problems out there was that you needed a, a visa and a work visa to, 
to obviously work and we were given um, some work based on our knowledge by a local company, but we couldn't get anything permanent out there. No, because to be so. fair, Americans say, right, okay, it should be jobs for our own people. And you know, I get that, yeah. 100%. But that was a really, really good learning curve for me. I bet it was, I bet yeah. it was. Oh, it's it's fantastic. Different, different cultures. Well, you could only, I mean, we were on site by six o'clock in the morning. We were finished by half past 11. Half past 11 in the morning, we were finished. Got two more. I need some of that. <laughs> yeah, but then, <laughs> but the most amazing bit was then straight down the beach, um, you know, and uh, we spent most of the day on the beach, so it was, you know, I suppose... Did you even have a break? Like, like, six, is it six straight to 11? No breaks? That's 11 o'clock in the morning. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no breaks, just straight through, because you had a complete day where you could just... Thank you very much. Mate. You weren't allowed to take cans or bottles on the beach because their um, patrols and all that are quite strict out there, so you had to just fill up plastic bottles with Coors and Budweiser and all that, and there we were on the beach. Great, happy days. Mate. For a young kid, it's brilliant, isn't Mate. it? <laughs> but, like, I bet, I, I bet it's not like that anymore. I bet, I bet that cream is not there anymore. Um, in this country, there's not really much cream left in the electrical industry, is there? When you say cream, what... It, you know, like, these, these nice jobs where you, can, where you get, like, mm. you get to shoot early, Get a full day's money and stuff like that. Or yeah. well, is that the standard practice out there? The six to half. It was. It was. Um, everybody finished at half past eleven because it was just too hot to work. Um, so it was great. I mean, night work was obviously available as well, so you could sort of jump on that. But it was for me. It was a holiday. It wasn't even a real job as such. I mean, we were earning something ridiculous, like um, twenty five dollars an hour or whatever back in the eighties. I mean, it was just crazy. So yeah, we were always funny. we were always pissed. Yeah. And you know. That's why I'm so fat now, but no. But seriously, it was great. It was absolutely great. And it's one of those lifetime things that you do and you think, well, OK, I've been there, I've done that. I'm incredibly jealous about it. Already. Yeah. But their systems are really good as well. Um, the American system is all about licensed electricians. So you That's have right. to have a particular license. You either have to be a licensed journeyman or a, a master electrician. Now, believe it or not, um, uh, this has come uh, from people we know that in the 80s, we almost went the same as the American system, but it got stopped. And then we went down the Park P route and all the, all the rest of it. That wasn't Besner, so, was it? Huh? That wasn't Besner. There was a whole big thing about Besner, wasn't there? Where yeah. they were going to change it. Where they, but my understanding of Besner was where they were going to partition it into different things. So you've got, say, at the time, I think it was saying like £12 an hour for yep. containment, yep. £15 no. pound an hour to wire, no, 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 and then no. uh, £20 pound an hour to test. Yeah, no. It, it, what it was, was, um, as I say, the, we were going to go down this line and I've, for, the powers to be, for, for whatever reason, decided they weren't going to do that. But what that would have done is that would have made us have a licence to practice. And a licence to practice over there means, quite simply, that they get a three-strike system. So yeah. if they do something wrong three times, what happens is they drop off the register. They can't apply for another five years. So where's your standard of work going to be? You can walk into Walmart, it, yeah. you can walk into Walmart over there and I can grab a trolley and I can go down the aisle and I can fill up with a consumer unit, I can put all my cables on, it's Imperial out there, I can put all the bits and pieces and I'll go up to the checkout girl, person, whoever, and I'll say, right, I want this lot and they'll say to you, uh, say to me, you, anybody, where's your licence? Well, I haven't got a licence. So basically it's, see that lot you got there, stick it back in the fucking aisles because you ain't having it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So if you was to go, if, so, if you, industry, yeah. Yeah, so if you went onto the internet and you was looking for a local electrician, it would only come up with a certain amount of names. You're only allowed to use those people because you need a permit to work. So they issue you a permit. So you can only use qualified, genuine people. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think of that system? Mate, I'm that's, not saying that, that's the dream though, know, that's the dream. Working, but, yeah. but that's the dream in this country. Yeah. Because what it, what it does is it stops Everyone, like, I'm not particularly on one bandwagon or the other. I sort of, I'm just sort of in it. However, you have you have people that call themselves an electrician, mm. turn up on site, and you're like, yeah. oh, what level are you at, mate? He goes, oh, I'm an electrician. Have you got a gold card? No, no, no. But I'm as good as any electrician. Like, well, relax, okay? Because that's all we've got to judge you by in the first on the first day is whether you're an electrician or not. Mm. And I find that the word electrician is very easily banded about. You can have your postman 
go and do a five week course. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. say he's an electrician. He can run he can run a radio, he can run a ring. But he doesn't really understand what 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 any of the technical aspects. Mm, no, no, no. You, and, you, it, and it's the logic that goes behind it, why you're doing that, why you're doing this. See at the end of the day, the right training has always taken time. Uh, whether you were fortunate enough to go onto the apprenticeship route or if you do the unit route through the 2365 or some other qualification. Like other but day. remember that you can get all of these qualifications. You only then start to come into the definition of skilled when you've got many years of experience within that discipline. So yeah. two that's things the to add to that. One, yeah. I didn't feel like a proper electrician until about five years after I qualified. Absolutely. And because in, in the Savian game, you can literally walk into a job mm. and it can be some big old house mm. that they've got agency sparks on, or you could end up in a controls room. And to be able to have that breadth of knowledge where you... It takes it years. It takes mm. years, years and years. And years, and years. Yeah. It's like, to this day, I still haven't done a contactor board. So oh, I haven't okay. done, I've, I've never wired the contactors or anything like that. I don't even know the theory about how, how it all works. I'd, if I come across a job, and I've been doing it 17 years now, if I, if I come across that job now, I'd have to phone someone. I'd, like, and that's all this time later. But the thing is, think about it. You've got different electricians in different areas that work. You've got people that work in medical and everyone never worked in anything else. You've got people that have been house bashing all of their lives and they've never worked in commercial. Yeah, but this all is sorts. a conversation I had at uh, New Year's Eve. Mm. I was around my friend's house mm. and he had this couple around and she's like, oh yeah, being an electrician's easy. I rewired our house. Mm. And I was like, okay, great. Say you rewired it properly and there's no issues. You probably did it absolutely fine. But you're not an electrician. No. You, you've just done one bit, which is, and this is no offence to the house bashers out there, but the basics of wiring a house is not too difficult to get your head around. It isn't, but you've got to give, what you've got to remember about the domestic industry is it's still, it's a credible industry. Um, most commercial sparks will go into a domestic setting and say, you know, because I've done it myself, because I was brought up in commercial. Yeah, yeah too much graft. You've got, two, you got, got two graft. different things going on. You've got, the, um, you've got the new build flats, houses and stuff like that, mm. where it is graft, it's all priced, and it is sling it in as quick as you can. Um, and, and that is out there. That's a fact. You know, um, back in the days when we used to do them, you know, I'd say used to do them properly, but, mm. you know, you're still on a price and you had to do them properly, whereas nowadays it tends to be less. However... Then you've got the rewire market. Now, the thing is with the rewire market is, yes, it is still, you know, domestic, but the problem is, is you've got all the, over, all the problems to get over. Lifting yeah. floorboards, moving yeah. furniture. You've got a lot more thinking. So you've got a spark who's just chucking in containment all day on a nice, clear commercial floor, nothing in the you way. Get them as well. Absolutely. You get them all the time. Whereas a guy who's doing the rewires, he's there, he's thinking, what am I doing? There's all this problem they solving. Harder, they work faster. Yeah, yeah. They work neater. Like, yeah, again, you're in someone's living room, you can't leave crap all over the floor. You, know, you can't get your grinder out, just yeah, grind through a floorboard or whatever. Yeah. Like a savage, but um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been on, on jobs where I've worked next to someone who's only ever done metal munching for ten yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, you put them to wire a board, they can't do it now. No, no. Well, they can do it, but it's going to take them ages, and it's not going to be that good. You put them doing anything outside of metal munching, all of a sudden they're like, "Well, I don't really do this." Mm. Like wiring lights. <laughs> I got a mate, a brilliant electrician. Give him a piece of test equipment. He'll try and knock nails in with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's weird. I don't What's know this how for? To test it. But I was I was on a job years ago, and, and this has always been a thing I've noticed with electricians: is two-way lighting or grid switches. Electricians like tend to go. I don't really do lighting, mate. You know like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. What, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. I was yeah. an apprentice on this job. It was a job up um, near Shoreditch uh, as a school up there. And it was absolutely flooded. It was a lovely job. It was a peak summer. It's summer holidays. And um, I, I was still an apprentice. Yeah. And I said, I said to the, the spark I was working with, I had to rip out the um, switch wire or something. 
And I took it off and it was all red. And, I, and I'd only been doing it a little while and I was like, oh, what do I do with this? What one's what? And he was like, I don't really do like it, mate. Just put the cover back on and say we did it. <laughs> Brilliant. I, like, I, I don't want to be that guy. No. And then I, when, when I went on to other jobs and I, there was only uh, metal munchers, hmm. listen, when you first start out as a spark, Metal munching is the most fun thing to do. Yeah. Like you create these wonderful things and, then, and, then, and you just stand back and go, I did that. But really, it's one of the most basic parts of it. And it's, mm. I mean, there's levels of metal munching. But the thing is, it's, it's also dictated because times have changed. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's changed for the worse or for the better. But back when we were apprentices, obviously, you had to do that. Part of your apprenticeship was you did all the metal munching. Um, you know, you did your tray, you did your conduit, you had to be really good at it. We did a lot of mineral. Um, so I was doing loads of mineral insulated all over the courts and everything like that. And that's a dying art for a start. Definitely. But, you know, it's, it's also the changing face of how technology changes as well. So there's uh, um, not so much a need for certain types of containment anymore and as things tend to go forward. But we, we always, as you get older, I think we become very critical of of new techniques and things like that, and that's See, that's obviously a, something that we got to. This is a massive thing, about. a bit of a bugbear of mine, is subby electricians will often moan about taking tools on site, and and you're like, well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you take your power tools on site? Yeah. Oh, why should I? Back in the day, we used to get paid fifty p for a drill and stuff like that. But you're not now. Not anymore. Right? Things have moved on. Mm. A drill don't cost 700 quid anymore. No, no. It costs no. one, you can buy one for 80 quid. Yeah. That'll do everything yeah. you need. Yeah, no, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? So times have changed. And then I'm like, well, why don't you come to work on a horse and cart then? In mm. fact, why don't you walk to work like the caveman would have had to? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Walk, to, walk, yeah. To, walk to one cave to another. Go <laughs> <laughs> sit there and do paperwork all day. But, but do you know what I mean? It's, it's mental. But training in the... Um, sort of apprenticeship sector now because obviously we do that I mean that's changing there's a new um, domestic uh, apprenticeship that's on right. the horizon so that's mm. that's coming out is it going to be a domestic gold card yes so with a um, domestic AM2 as well yeah there's you know what I'm a fan all of. the way through to um, endpoint assessment but I mean they've all dived on on the internet you see it all on there well you know yeah. we're de-skilling the industry we're doing this that and the other and, and with one uh, on one breath, I kind of I kind of understand where they're coming from, but you've got to also think of you know um, you know how everything's starting to uh, you know to form and go forward. So if you're just a house basher and you're doing loads and loads of new contracts, a three-year apprenticeship just doing um, domestic work might fit you. Now, for some old git like me, I'll probably be the one going, well, you should do the proper apprenticeship and you should do this, that, and the other. However, the times have changed, and if you think about it logically, if you're only doing that, why are you then sort of bending conduit or trying to create ladder and build big, you know, panels when you won't ever get to do that type of work? So you've got to think, well, there's a reason that the Skills Council and TESP and all that have come up with these ideas. I know everybody That's tends to argue... Pro- yeah, but the problem we've got is, is longevity, because... Mm-hmm. You know, going in and doing like new build and house bashing when you're young, yeah, slinging it in day in and smashing your body in, you know, day in, day out, etc. When you get to your 40s and stuff like that, and you know, a bit older, I'm only in my 40s. Hey, yeah, you're born in your 40s, <laughs> born in the 40s. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? It was like when you're older, do you really want to be carting your ass across some building site on a freezing cold morning like today with your tools and a I'll, gen- I'll to generator? To oh, to mate, it. it's you know. So is it short sighted? Because at that point, then you want to go and do some commercial stuff or whatever. And actually, do you know what, mate? You're not an electrician. Well, the way it's at the moment, what they're talking about, um, because we've had um, obviously the, the papers come through and we've we've been involved with the process, is they've said that so it's three years. So you do a three year apprenticeship and it's all around domestic. However, if you um, want to do commercial work and you want to go onto a site that requires a gold card for commercial, you've got to go back to college and do an extra year. Now, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> the reason I'm okay with that is because then, in order to work in that environment, you have to go back and... Like a bolt on. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it's going to be a gold card. with still going to have registered electrician, but it's going to be more indigenous to um, domestic. So, do you know I'm what? I'm a fan I, of it. I'm a fan. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because I will never... Like, I, I did flirt with the idea, 
of leaving subbing and going to domestic, just doing my own work. Because mm. you can you can nick the same sort of money after a while yeah. doing domestic in your your own boss. Yeah. There's a whole host of different problems why I don't want to do it. But mm. the chain like <coughs> excuse me. The skill set, like we spoke about at the beginning of the podcast, from being on site to going and doing domestic work, there is a big gap. Mm. And vice versa. And a lot of electricians tend not to bridge that gap. Mm. Mm. You know, a house bachelor very rarely will tend to, to go over to go and do commercial. So they, all the skills and knowledge they learn, bending tube, making conduit and uh, whatever, they don't really need to do in their career. Like someone like Nick Bundy um, was a former host of the show, friend of mine, famous YouTuber, does um, house bashing only. Loves it. Okay. Doesn't want to do yeah, anything. absolutely, no. yeah. Okay. Get that. Doesn't need to know anything about commercial. He's not gonna go into commercial, it's not a thing for him. So his apprentice is coming through, and his apprentice is, was struggling to find work to do that would get him over- For the MBQ, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I well, think it's I think it's good. And then mm. if you want to bolt on another year of commercial onto it, so you are familiar with it, do that. That's great. Well, the two, three, five, seven pathways were quite difficult, weren't they? Especially for domestic installers. Why is you had a lot two, of three, five, seven? Like I know what that is. Sorry, mate. Two, three, five, seven. <laughs> so that was the that was the standard apprenticeship. The two, three, five, seven, thirteen was the standard apprenticeship scheme up until the new one, um, which is slightly um, it's slightly more biased to, um, towards um, creating evidence around everything rather than just being more towards what we, Mark and I used to do, which is more metal munching. So it's a slightly more forgiving uh, qualification that have gone on to over to called the 5357. Um, and that's the apprenticeship standard at the moment. Um, but the 2357 pathways, when they come onto their MBQ, they still, uh, as a bit of a throwback, they take a particular path depending on what qualifications they've previously done and then they're put on that route for their MBQ. But it's still, um, things that they need to um, sort of look at. You still need to do uh, six out of nine types of, uh, con not containment, cable. You've got to do is show all your containment. You've got to show a mixture of everything. So is that bad still thing? there. Is no, that no, bad I'd, thing? I'd, I'd, but the, one of the issues is that if you're not set up for that, in retrospect to if you don't do it at all, and you're a domestic installer, it's very, very difficult to go and get that sort of information so to get people struggling. In someone's, in someone's yeah, loft, absolutely. You, yeah. You know what I mean? oh, I'm going to put a bit of tray up in your lot. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well, no, actually, it'd make it quite neat, wouldn't it? Yeah. Bit, of, bit of basket yeah. through loft, bit of tray, that's that yeah. box ticked. Bit of uh, two five on, uh, bit of twin up on. Uh, but, on yeah, sorry, you asked me a question earlier about my, where I came from and all that. So, um, getting to the point, really, cool. is that. Mark and I met at a, a local FE college because um, we'd, done, club, we'd done the graft. <laughs> we'd been the yeah, swingers club. We'd done the graft for years and years and years. And do you know what? I'd, I had an opportunity with a local college. They phoned me up first of all and I told them to do one because obviously the money's just not even worth it no. at, at any of the colleges. So I kind of get that. However, um, they then phoned me about six months later and said, would I be interested in doing Let me take like an afternoon or an evening or whatever? Yeah, go on. Let me take you back a quick second. Yep. So what made you leave Sparking and transfer to, uh, to working at FE and working in teaching? Um, well, I've got... You know I'm, what they say about listen, teachers? I'm near, I'm this next, <laughs> next month, I'm 60 years old. Right. He's already there. No, I'm, no, I'm not. Not yet, pal. Not yet. I still got a few days. So, realistically, it was, um, I was, think it was probably around when I was a 47, 48. And I decided then that because I'd been on site most of my life, yeah. I'd been in and out, I'd done the management thing, I'd done all of that. It was just, I honestly, genuinely felt that by doing a little bit of teaching, and I questioned if I was good enough, first of all, and I'll be honest with you, whether I could give something back. And that was my okay. sole purpose. So I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I'd, I had my um, NIC firm, and I'm still dealing with that, but I had somebody in there that was um, taking over the management side of it. So I went and did an evening uh, at the college, and I found I really enjoyed it. So I thought, do you know what I could, I could do with this? The, the money was shit. It was, you know, it wasn't, it, for me, it wasn't about the money. It's not, I was at a stage in my life where I was kind of like, 
you know, at that point where what do I do sort of thing, you know, do I carry on and completely knacker myself or do I sort of gravitate and do something different? Mm. So I started off and then within, I think, of three or four months, I was full time and I couldn't believe it. And I was like, well, OK, I, was, I think I was paying me something like 37 grand. Or something like that. They're paying me thirty-seven so grand. A, it's a tough drop, but you had your business supporting you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But they were paying me thirty-seven grand, but I was also getting something ridiculous like fifty holidays. So selfishly, I was yeah. thinking, well, hang on, yeah. fifty, 50, 50 holidays. Sorry, 50, 50, 52, fifty-two days. days. Yeah. Fifty-two days yeah. a year, Lovely. and you know, and I was getting all this, and I was getting, you know, and also I was in the teachers' pension, so there was all that, and I thought, Do you know what, this is pretty good. Now. I met Mark there, and Mark was doing um, the apprentices. I was doing the level twos, so I sort of got myself into a, a situation where I was doing the level twos, and I liked it because it was all about the kids that didn't really know what they wanted to do, but it was more, they were challenging as well. Yeah, and yeah. I really liked that because I really liked that. So I was there, and, and I started doing this, and then the job became more about the management team looking at bums on seats, nothing to do with the progression of the journey of the student and it became more about that and I thought you know it's not the reason I joined the college so we, we're having a chat one day and, and, and I've said either you and I and we said we could do it better than this why not and oh my god what a minefield it was we had to get full City and Guilds accreditation we had to look at um, our TACWA qualifications, um, we'd already done our teaching quals. We then had to look oh, at God. becoming IQAs, we then had to look at, um, you know, HR, we had to look at all that around education, which is a massive, yeah. massive thing. Um, it isn't easy. Opening no. something like this is, it's a massive commitment. And it's also, it takes resources. We've created an AM2 centre there, that's cost us a fortune, do you know what I mean? So. It, the whole thing was more about longevity of getting these kids who are phoning up and saying, look, you know, I haven't quite got my qualification yet through circumstances for others. Yeah, can you help me? Can you do this? That this happens, is what it's all about. That happens mm. more often than not. All Many, the time. I, when I was doing it, I had to do it off my own back. Mm. So I started out of, with an, as an apprentice. Yeah. And then that all went, went wrong because it was like 2000, like two, the late 2000s. Oh, okay. So like 2007, 8, 9, mm. where it was all... Then there was the a bit of a recession around that time and, and there as well, yeah, 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 yeah. And a load of people got knocked, a load yeah. of companies yeah. went under, yeah. all yeah. kinds of things. Mm. So I had to sort of finish out on my own. The college kept me on. Yeah. So big shout out to Bromley College, who I know is an FE college. Yeah, but they, superb. But we had, we had some great teachers. Yeah. Like they were in it for the same reasons you was, yeah. And they'd done everything to get us through. Mm. Mm. And it was at a, it was at a time where they were talking about changing it from two three three zero to something oh, else. Oh, that was yeah. That, that qualification lasted for about seven or eight years, I believe. But I think this was coming to the end yeah. of it. And there's yeah. like in that first year, there was like you might have to do your first year again. If mm. they swap it now, you're gonna have to. Do, it never happened. Oh. Mm. Um, it didn't happen. Where we had to had to do a year again, but they looked after us. They made sure like I'd get cut, like I was out of work for about six months. Yep. So I was just doing bits and pieces, doing working with like an electrician locally if I could for a couple of days and stuff like that. And they kept me on. They really they shouldn't have kept me on mm. because they're not really allowed to. Mm. But they kept it going, and I got and and so <laughs> I come out of that. <clears throat> but I had to. I had to really scrimp. I had to go and work for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do whatever that. it took. I went on an agency. I done whatever it, whatever it took. I went labouring um, on a building site mm. so as I could find an electrician on there and try and get a job through them. Mm. I did whatever it took. So it's more, and that's and that's mm. not unusual. No. No. Um, and like you say, a lot of the time people need colleges like this. To finish off their colour. Well, yeah. there, there, there's always yeah, criticism for private enterprise. There always is. Well, you're in it but, for the money. Yeah, but the, the, what you've got to understand is that the money aspect is a side effect of we have to keep this place going, so we have to make money. But if you did it badly, yeah. you wouldn't make money. No, exactly that. However, we've got people that come to us, and, you know, it's when they shake, shake your hand and say, oh, I've just got my MVQ, I'm just... I'm going through to my AM2, I've, I've finished that. Guys, you've got me through. 
for us, that's the icing on the cake. That's the, you know, that's what it's all about. It's getting them through, <clears throat> and that's superb for, for us. See, I find, I find, like, I was nervous about doing it, and it got yeah. into my head. I'm quite a confident guy. I didn't yeah. get into any situation yeah, 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 to work. Yeah, 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 but when yeah. I, when I, I've got the whole 18th, I felt like, if I didn't do it, because I announced it, I'm doing the 18th on the podcast and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, if I fail this, <laughs> what a plan. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, going back to the next one. Yeah, really by the way. way. But if it wasn't for the fact that, I mean, we, there weren't, weren't no early shoots whilst we was doing this no. course, was there? No. No, it wasn't like, oh, right, well, that's enough today, lads. So, uh, it's half 12, go on, shoot off for the day. Like, cause that's no, really it's hard work. It's hard work. That's really what we yeah. want. Mm. But what we need is full days, making yeah. sure you're driving mm. it into us. Absolutely. Because at the end, when it comes to the end and I'm, and I'm all sitting there, I had to rely on what was driven into me rather than, you know, going home and, like, because mm. I ain't going to go home and study nine times out of ten. I remember your face when you came out of the exam and you came downstairs and we gave you your result, or I gave you a result. You looked at me and you went, oh, I haven't passed that, not in a million years. And of course I had that and I just sort of chuckled to myself. <laughs> I do my poker yeah, face tonight, yeah, my yeah. sort of, oh, really? No. <laughs> And I said to you, didn't I? Really? And then you went, oh, that's getting worse. And then, there you go, have a yeah. nice pass. <laughs> yeah. You're obviously capable of doing it and you, don't put yourself down. Don't, nobody should put themselves down. You were fine in there. You was coming across with ideas. You was reading the, um, the appropriate regulations and you were making a conversation for it. So you were doing fine. Again, like you're saying about the whole thing is money's a side effect of what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Actually. But if you wasn't doing it well, the money wouldn't be well, would mm. it? Yeah, you couldn't keep the business going, I get that. But it, it, it's, it really is for us. I mean, we don't live from month to month thinking, you know, how much money am I going to take home this week or this month or whatever. It isn't really about that. It's to do with the fact that these people, when they come through, that they have a good experience. They go outside and they say, do you know what? They actually helped me. When you get that, you helped me, that makes all the difference. So, and, and to be fair, we're only, as a company, we're just coming into our fourth year. Mm. And there's still some months. We don't think anything home. Only four years. Only from, four from years from we've nothing. been going from wow. nothing. We, we came we, from nothing. We started, uh, we did our first course in 2019, February, February March yep. 2019. Mm -hmm. And that was in a one office down in um, Ashford. One easy, I um, can't remember what the place was called, but easy in, easy out. Just rented yeah, an like office. a month. And all we did yeah, yeah. was the um, 18th edition. It was just a room, it wasn't well, much bigger than this, was no, it? No. About this, that's all it was. Just did but the 18th edition. Got that's started, did. didn't it? Got started, we're still working at where we worked, you know. Um, so we were doing it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 18th yeah, edition courses, just weekend courses. And then we took a punt on um, Maidstone. Um, we got a place in Maidstone, office and a classroom on the first floor and a little workshop and on the second floor, a little workshop where we did the 2391 and bits and pieces like that. And then March 2020, um, that's when we took a punt on this place. And bear in mind, this was an empty warehouse. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So was it we, a month before COVID? Yeah, we, we, we got it in February. Um, we actually moved in, moved in on the 1st of March and I think we got shut down on the 10th of March, something like that, which was great in as much that because we got the mezzanine in straight away, we had all the gear, or a lot of gear, before COVID hit. And so the three of us, it was myself, Kev and a chippy, three of us, we built all that. Yeah, it's awesome. In and we, we opened again our doors in late June or something like that. Financially, we took a massive, massive, yeah. massive hit, yeah. you know, uh, et cetera. But, but, but yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, all right, had that not been a thing, you could have yeah. probably jiggled it about, mm. and, you know, like upstairs, downstairs, it and stuff like that. But Mark, we spoke about Kev. I want to know a bit about you. I did make you show me your gold card before we started. <laughs> no, he's not younger than me. <laughs> uh, what I wasn't going to do is sit here and have someone who's done a five-week course tell me that they love teaching electricians. <laughs> Fair right. enough, yeah. No, I mean, me, I, I came out of school, 16, didn't have a clue what I was going to do. Um, brother came home and they'd just laid off the apprentice where he worked because he was scared of heights. Uh, and so we were looking for somebody. So I went down there on a Saturday morning with all my, you know, in my shirt and tie and that, and my yeah, qualifications. Yeah. And Ron Herrival, bless him, he said to me, he said, I don't care. He said, I don't care what you've got. He said, you've got three months to prove yourself. If you prove yourself in three months, I'll give you an apprenticeship. By the way, when you're 21, I'm going to sack you. 
And that's what he did. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because your JIB rate, which was something ridiculous, like three pounds yeah, sixty an hour or whatever they, it was, they, they, was coming that slightly higher. The mentality high. yeah. was, is if you stayed on the company, you'd always be the boy. Yeah. So yeah. I had it was all things like school rewires. So it was all containment, uh, MI, singles, um, armoured, you know, big warehouses, all commercial. Never did any domestic at all. Pop Spartan. Yeah, but when I came out of my time at 21, it was, um, well, I've never done domestic. Right, no. I need to learn to do domestic. Mm -hmm. So I did four years working for a company doing rewires and new builds. So, you know, doing council rewires for sort of four years off and on. Yeah, do you know That's what I mean? But it's, but it's a learning curve. And I, I think, you know, for a good Were electrician. Yeah, I know, occupied. We had, oh, we had yeah. voids, occupied, it, yeah. Hounslow Homes, I've told this a million times. Hounslow, right. Listen, it was. Yeah, I suppose awful. it was. Listen, it was awful. People opening the door naked, and you're like, "Oh Jesus, why am I here?" That wasn't you, was it? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't me. I don't wear underpants. I don't open the door naked. But uh, yeah, the occupied B wires. That's the right eye. Yeah, there, and this is what I'm saying. When you because when you do the commercial stuff, yeah, you know, when you're doing occupied rewires and stuff like that, the things, the hoops you have to jump. It's just a different thought process. Completely. Did you ever do a hoarder's house? Oh, mate. Oh, I went yeah. into one and they had all these bottles, like empty Coke bottles, had been stacked perfectly. <laughs> and I was like, what am I going to do? Anyway, without a fail, I'm clumsy. I knocked it. the whole lot you come down. The ho like, it might but they went over like dominoes, didn't they? Oh, mate, once, once one goes, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to stop it. It's like, bosh, they all come down. And I was like, Jesus. But the, like, they was hauling ho stuff. They had three dogs in the house. Unbelievable, wasn't it? it, it it's yeah. amazing what you see coming, you know, um, coming from a clean house and this, that, and the other. When you go into some, I remember going into the first one, one of the first ones I did, and there was, there was a cobweb. It was a head height when you were laying down in the bed, and it must have gone three foot that way to the corner, three foot that way, and it was about a foot deep. And I'm thinking, how can you sleep with that beside your head it's every bad. night? It, it just, how do you not see that? Oh mate! By the time I finished that, the, you know, the contract, you know, two years later or whatever it was, it was like that was clean, that was spotless. Yeah. You know, some of the things you see, you know, oh, don't, disgusting. But, yeah, but there so you, you go. From, That's so nice. You went from, uh, so, uh, yeah. So did four years of that. Then I went subbing. Four years of that. Yeah, four years. So eighty-eight, I went subbing, um, doing a lot of PSA work. The old PSA works, all the government buildings up in London okay. again, so it was all commercial stuff. Again, nice yeah, then um, did a load of fire alarm stuff, MIs and all that. Um, did a load of fire alarm stuff, Galleria. Um, all subbing, started my own company, um, doing again all commercial. But again, you just as an electrician, I think that's the mentality, the contractor's mentality yeah. is that if it's there, do it. Because if yeah. you don't do it, somebody else will do it, yeah. and that's your money sort of thing. So I think you get that, that, that contractor's mentality. Um, did access control, flight simulators, anything that came along, that's what I did. See, this is, this is one good thing about the commercial aspect of it. I mean, like yourself, I've done everything, apart from contact sports. But I've, done, I've worked in like, <laughs> recently I've just come um, from um, managing installation of medical imaging suites, CT scanners. Mm -hmm. X-ray machines, the whole lot, and but I was I wasn't just um, managing um, the electrical; I was managing the whole package as well. So it was really exciting stuff, and just sort of specking different bits and and, and trying to work, like you say, mm. working out problems. You know what hospitals are like? It's layers upon layers upon layers of stuff that's not been ripped out; they've just gone over the top yeah, of it. Always, mm. yeah, always yeah, 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 yeah. Taking neutrals off the lighting circuit for a socket and stuff like that. Mental, mental. <laughs> And like, so you've got to test it before you can even start to know what you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really enjoyed that. And then BMS I went on to before that. That that was interesting. And like now I'm now I'm doing shed building. And I say shed building loosely. It's doing industrial units. They yeah. call it shed building. So you've got all your main incomers downstairs, and then you've got all your containment. And then you go up into the office area. You might as well be house bashing mm. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, it's like this whole mixture, and it's one of the good things about the whole commercial side, is if you if you've done commercial properly and really thrown yourself into it, 
You're quite a well-versed, well-rounded. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that, again, when I come out of time, going and doing the whole domestic thing is another, you know, my whole mentality throughout my working career is another string to your bow. Another string to your bow. I was the same. Because yeah. I I, I, during my apprenticeship, it was mostly schools. I kept going out with the contracts that I had when I was the yeah, same as Mark as a subby. Yeah, but we were putting in black enamel conduit. Mm. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. Yeah. Black but enamel conduit black with MICCs. Have you seen it since? So, um, yeah, and um, that's what I was brought up on, on that commercial side of it. We did a lot of factory work. Uh, we did fit outs, buzz bar trunking, yeah. rising mains, all of that type of stuff. But what I hadn't done is I hadn't done any domestic. And to be honest, I didn't have a clue how to do it. So I thought, you know what, I've got to add that string to my bow and I'm going to go and, and do it. And then I actually hooked on to a, a company that wanted uh, a couple of guys to go and start doing rewires. And then I got stuck at bloody Tower Hamlets, exactly what you guys are saying where people are actually giving it one over the bath and all that, and you're in the other room <laughs> putting in the socket outlets. And I thought, this can't be real. Bear in mind, I was still fairly young then. Yeah, and I just thought, what? Young, yeah, what am I doing here? And I'm not getting paid enough money for yeah. this shit. I think I was doing occupied rewires oh. as, a, as a, yeah. an apprentice for a bit. Um, and I think I was getting £60 a day yeah. with my own van and tools. Right. Mm. Driving the electrician yeah. who had lost his license for drinking <laughs> to the job. <laughs> and I was getting sixty pounds a day yeah. and uh, like that's mental and mm. when you think back uh, but we, and we were doing two flats a day mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. you rewind two flats a day. That's mm. nuts. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't work at that pace now. No, but that's the thing. Like, and this is what I was saying, going going back earlier, about this whole domestic apprenticeship thing, it's great. But it's a young man's game, isn't it, really? Oh, 100%, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Why do you still see a lot of, like, a lot of the guys on, uh, on social media and that? They're still, they're plodding about. Yeah. Van, plodding yeah. About, and why not? The thing is, you're happy, isn't it? There's a market You're happy it. when you're out on the road. See, yeah. I, I do have some customers locally, because when I came to you to do the 18th, yep. the plan was to do the 18th, do 2391, go and get my nap it, yep. um, and then go out on my own. Okay. Um, and I started doing like little jobs in that, you know, like little stuff. Yeah. And I just automatically hated it. Automatically okay. hated it. I don't really like it, but I still do them little jobs now. Mm. So there's a nice lady around the corner, I'll go and, I'll go and whatever. I don't know how these people find stuff for you to do so often. Like it might be, oh, I need a light gun. Oh, I need you to actually change that light for you think, why are you changing so many lights? Sometimes I think it's just you want someone to talk to, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that one of the problems with domestic is this, this whole realisation that, you know, the DEI course is actually now gone. And, you know, for, for us as a training provider, we are constantly, um, you know, we're up against people that are still sort of doing that in some guise or the other. Um, we, we only do the credible routes. Um, there's nothing else for us. Um, but, you know, to be honest with you, Sam, it's just sometimes it's a real probably, chore. Getting people it. phoning up, do you do, do, you do the six-week course because there's someone else uh, that will do it in six weeks? And I say, no, I don't. You need to, you know, you need to study properly. You need to do the unit route or the apprenticeship. Not interested. Not interested. Off they go. Five yeah. grand later. Six months later, they're on the phone to us. Yeah. I can't get a gold card. <laughs> <laughs> really? Do you know what drives me wild about that? Mm. It's, so my very first electrical job, with, with, um, with a chap called Paul. And he was supervising um, some, uh, a floor at St. Thomas's, not St. Thomas's, Guy's Hospital, oh, right. next to the train station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. London Bridge. Mm, yeah, it. London Bridge, yeah. Yeah, that one. And I think it was like the 14th floor or something we was doing. And they was using black enamel there. And I've never seen it since. <laughs> black enamel conduit boxes, a whole lot. In a museum. Yeah. And um, so I was, I, was working, I was working for him and someone come up to me and said, listen, one day, like, come up to me and said, you'll never have one of them. And showed me a gold card and I was like, why is that? And it's like, that means you're an electrician. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I need one of them. I need to have one of them. Absolutely. Right now, Absolutely. I need one of them. And uh, so that, when I went to the college, when I find, so I went to Bromley College and stood in the queue like this, with 16-year-olds around me, mm. I was 20, and I, I was 20-odd, 
and I'm looking at all these, and I, I, it was touch and go, like literally come down to the wire whether I was going to stand in that queue or just go home. Yeah. Literally that yeah. close. Yeah. But once I got in there, the first question I, was, I asked is, if I sign up to this course, do I get a gold card? Yeah. And I was like, yes. Like, if you do everything on this course, you'll get a gold card. And then every week for about the first five weeks, I was like, do I get a gold card at the end of this course? It's all I obsessed about. And then I needed to find out all the different components I needed to get to get the gold card. Yeah. And everything, like, I was obsessed with getting the gold card to the point, it's where the JRB used to be, was it Dartford? Swan Lake. Swan Lake. No, that's where oh. it is now, isn't it? Well, I don't know, I always thought it was there. It was, before it was in like the Guildford sort of way. Was it Sick Cup? Was it not Sick Cup? Somewhere. I'm sure there was something at Sick Cup, wasn't it? Oh, on the hill. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, you could pay £250, go and pick it up that day. Um, or you could wait like six weeks, I think it was. I was like, well, I'm paying 250 quid. There's no way I'm not doing mm. that. Yeah, Went there and they was like, well, you can wait or we can send it to you first thing in the morning. I was like, no, I'll wait. I sat there all day waiting for my gold card. <laughs> all day. And I was so happy. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, like like a kid when you get like a saying good. I was like walking up the street. Oh, no, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> uh, walking up to my the fair Uno. So these people that go and do a course and they think, oh, we'll go and get a gold card now. It's their own fault. Like, yeah. For not doing the due diligence. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the, they're, yeah, not due, doing the due all diligence. All the information is available from tests, but I mean, they're the leading light really on trying to improve our industry, the Skills Council. So the, the internet, huh? the internet. Yeah, well, absolutely. The internet, then? Yeah. Well, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, 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 yeah, but well, you yeah, say yeah, that. But the, the, the thing is, is mm -hmm. people will come into us and say, "Oh, this is what I want to do." Blah 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 blah. And like you said, and we also say, well, this, and we always show them, have a look at these test posters, go onto the web test website, have a look at that. If you want the gold card, that is the route. If anybody tells you any different, then they're lying to you. And they'll come back and say, oh, well, so-and-so is doing this course. Right, okay, and what? What does that mean to me? And well, no, they reckon. I say, well, look, do you know what? I've told you. Yeah. Now, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. And we always say, it doesn't matter whether you come here and do it, if you go somewhere else, we will always give you the best advice. Mm. Whether you take that advice, that's down to yourselves. But they, they will, they'll come and then they'll talk, well, yeah, well, they said this. Do you know what? I'm telling you, not coming from me, go on the test website, speak to the JRB. Go and speak to the JRB, ask them. And they still go and do some stupid course. I phoned them up to double check. That I was going to get my gold card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you've got to want it. You've got yeah. to, and I think it's quite an important message for life, really. Mm. Like if you're going to do it, do it properly, and do it right. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've been gold card holders for a long time, but um, I never did the AM2. You did. You no, did because it, it no. didn't exist. No, it didn't exist. We did the AM1. I didn't do the AM1. Didn't you do the AM1? That was before hey? the AM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but hang on. I, I did a job being indentured apprenticeship, pal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> so, Not one of these hooky apprenticeships. So basically, um, when I done my apprenticeship, I, I, I was unfortunate I couldn't complete my last nine months because I fell out with my boss, and this is being totally honest, so I had to go and finish off my 2365 elsewhere, which I did. 2365, 2365 part one and part two. Oh, okay. So I got that. Um, However, when I got my first gold card, that wasn't a problem. But when I think I went to renew it for the third time, um, I got a knockback and say that you haven't got the AM2 because I think it came out around about 87, 88, and I started to look at it then or something like that. And I said, well, of course I haven't got it. I said, because I've never, I've done it. I did the credible route. And they were like, you can't have a gold card. So what I had to do is I had to get a, um, a letter from a qualified electrician yeah. that I had to get then put in and then they gave me my gold card and then said, oh yes, you've got granddad rights. I so, took one of those letters with me as well. Yeah. I took one of those letters from a qualified electric, yep. JRB electrician with me mm. as proof that I was gonna get my gold. I left no stone unturned. Mm. But if you think logically, if they change it to an AM3 say, does that mean everybody that's done an AM2 doesn't get a gold card? Well, no, you should it's done crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you've done was, you yeah. half-assed it, and you got away with it for a bit. 
<laughs> he blanked it. <laughs> You're basically a bull in the back spot. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, for me, um, now I have no problems because believe it or not, when we go on to the My, um, my ECS oh, yes. website, um, my qualifications, because none of mine show anymore, and I, said, oh, I questioned that, I said, why is that? When we phoned up the guy, I think Anya phoned him up, and he said, uh, yeah, he said, your qualifications are there. He said, you just can't see them because they were so long ago. I was like, oh, oh, okay. But they're there, but you'll still get your card. What do you mean, they faded? All the ink's <laughs> faded yeah. off of them. That old John Ball printing kit, mate. That's, <laughs> That's the one, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, again, at the end of the day, because I hold a gold card for whatever reason, doesn't mean I'm great at being an electrician. This is one of the issues facing our industry these days, is there are people out there that you know that turn up on site that have got a gold card, and happy days, but sometimes it's a little bit, you know, suspect and, you know, you're dealing with these people and you're saying, really, did you go through all of that? that road? So we're dealing with that and it is, it is a bit of an issue. Just because you've got a car doesn't make you the best. Thing well, this is, this is the other thing is as well. Getting the gold cards is, is like your, your starting point. Absolutely. I've got a, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, times, I yeah. come out with my mm, gold card, I was so proud of it. Mm. But you couldn't sure. put me on site and be able to turn my hand to anything. No, no. Like, You're still it learning. Was, it was still years learning. before I could walk on site confidently. Mm. Absolutely. And, like, I'd be worrying, please don't put me on lighting. Please don't put me on lighting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean? I think the, the thing with... a mad thing? Like, the contactors. I think with me, the, with, with what I did in my apprenticeship, because it's all rewires, you know, school rewires yeah. and new builds and stuff like that, mm. and, and warehouses and stuff like that, and the fact that at 21, it was see you down the road. So when I went to that next firm, I went as an electrician. So it was a very big time to grow up. Yeah, so it was a yeah, very big learning yeah, yeah, curve yeah, yeah. Um, because yeah. then you've got apprentices there. Well, you're the electrician. You should know that type of scenario. Yeah, so it's, you, you grow up very, very quickly, I think. See, yeah. for me, when I, when I did it, I, I went out with straight away earning whatever it was at the time. I think, do you know what? I think I got it and it was just coming out of the recession or whatever, and I think I was getting £12.50 an hour um, on a seven hour day. Mm. And I was so disappointed, I was like, I've worked my ass off. And because the, and, there was no jobs about, mm. and then, when it is what it is, I suppose. Mm. But guys, we've come to that time. Monday, Dub, we're out. <laughs>